Well, good morning everyone. This is uh, David here making this video from Denver, Colorado in my hotel room. So the event here is actually IMS 2022 and we are fortunate enough to be part of this uh, exhibition and, and everything that's going to happen here in the next three days. Uh, currently it's still Monday evening but it's already Tuesday in Australia and I feel quite comfortable to let the Australian community know in advance what the um, topic is that we're going to present and have at booth 3000 between Black Art Technologies and also WavePro. So what I want to do is just run through the slides that we have available to present at 2 o'clock on the um, three three days of the event itself and let you let you understand what WavePro is all about, what they can off offer for us as antenna engineers in general, I guess. Um, but before I do that, I just want to present an overview of Black Art Technologies and just let you know where we are so that you can get an appreciation where we would actually fit into the ecosystem of WavePro as well. So without further ado, let me get into my presentation. So first things first, so of course, as I mentioned, it's Black Art Technologies. That's one of the, um, the two businesses that we run out of Australia. Uh, we're here together with WavePro from the United States. WavePro is designing a, um, an awesome dielectric material, um, PTFE based, and the key thing for me as an antenna designer is the, um, the electric constant can be anything from DK2 up to DK20. It is customizable for you as the end user, which is awesome if you want to design something and there is not something available that you explicitly want or need, then you can talk to the um, awesome team at WavePro and they can help you with a specific design or material that will work for your design. As well as the customizable uh, DK, it's obviously the material shape itself, so shaping, sizing and the way it's formed. That's all part of the um, opportunity that you can get from the company involved here. Wave so they, they are, um, it's Garlock basically, and Garlock is launching this new new brand, WavePro, and you can watch this stuff on waveproantennas.com. Um, but let me get into my slide deck, and primarily first is to, just to introduce who is uh, Black Art Technologies, passionate team of antenna and passive power of circuit design engineers. I'll kind of go through these, and I'll quickly give a summary of what I actually mean by saying all these things. Create a solutions to complex problems to achieve the best results for our customers. Wide range of design projects from FM to X-Band. Uh, High-end custom antenna design, and also consumer solution available on e-commerce site rfshop.com.au. Now, first of all, because I say we're a passionate team of antenna and passive RF design engineers, really what I'm saying is we love what we do. We're Oh, the word is a bunch of nerds having a lot of fun, but we do take it very serious. So it's not just having fun and then just having a laugh about it. It's serious fun. So we actually want to get the best for our customers. That's why we get to the next point, which is creative solutions. Um, creative solutions to complex problems. And as you know from our YouTube channel, keep it simple, keep it real. That is the motto that I have. And what I mean with that in this case is definitely going back to principles. Don't go over the top complicated. If you can use and you should use the fundamental properties of certain devices and antennas and the things that you use to make sure you get the best solution for a long-term efficient outcome. Wide range of design projects. So this is rele relevant to what we've currently been working on, anything from FM to expand. So you know, 100 meg to 10 gig. That's kind of where we seem to have a lot of exposure, and I really love that. Through RF Shop, you would know that the, pretty much in the 4G, 5G space and the Wi-Fi space, those are the key frequencies that we get a lot of experience in. So 700 meg up to 6 gig, and then of course Wi-Fi 6E is also coming up. So we're stretching that to 7 gig as a standard frequency for us to work with. Expand. We've done quite a few um, projects and designs for customers in that band as well. So it is expand, expanding. <laughs> Pun intended with X. I guess, um, and we'll hopefully we go further as well at, at some higher frequencies at the future states. High-end customer antenna design, what I really mean with that is that the commodity and the consumer frequency uh, applications, uh, typical 4G, typical Wi-Fi, that's been done. There's a lot of people doing that. It's to us, that's not interesting. We want to go for interesting work. Even if it's the same frequency band, it's custom antenna design. And we see a lot of interest, and this is what I'm going to say out loud here. If you have a need for an antenna, but you would want to have your box as the outcome. So you say, this is my box. This is what a customer wants to see. But we need to have a 2.4 gig antenna, or we need to have a GPS antenna, or we need to have some 4G antennas in there. That's the box. 
how can we integrate that requirement into this box as part of our PCB and the rest of us. That's where we could come in. So basically, we could be the antenna engineer that you don't want to employ because it's only for this project. We'll be there to help we'll get you through the process. Consumer solutions available on our e-commerce site of shop.com.au. We have our website that's been running for um, more than a decade by now. Um, we sell our solutions and Black Art Technologies will soon find some solutions in there as well. You may actually see at the moment one of our first um, just creative little ideas is this window mount antenna for IoT um, was driven by the Helium project. Um, that's now on our website and you'll see a few more of our creative own solutions coming through as well but we'll definitely keep um, pushing uh, key partnerships with the likes of pointing antennas and alpha antennas as some of our selected antennas which is they do the design work for certain applications and they do it well we're not going to bother with those we we'll say well those are good solutions for that product there we go that's what you get for that kind of application however let's get into uh, some design examples because that's obviously where a bit of fun is and uh, specifically creativity and simplicity Keep it simple, keep it real. That's all the motto that we have. And <laughs> what you might have seen next to me is a flag. Now, of course, being an Australian company, being in the US, we have to present, we have to fly our flag, don't we? But this is actually an antenna. So that's a normal IoT antenna. It's one from MP antennas. We modify it by adding some additional components next to it. But rather than just adding components and making this antenna, which is potentially not the most pretty device in the house, we, um, what I'm trying to sell here is we add creativity and ways to make a real estate that people would say, yeah, I can live with that in my house. And in the meantime, we say as antenna designers, well, let's use that space for something else as well. But what would it be without a um, option for some other flags as well? So, of course, we're going to do the Australian flag, and this is the uh, US flag with exactly the same functionality. It obviously takes it further as well. Um, I have a Wi-Fi version as well. This is the one we're going to have on the table at the um, IMS 2022, so booth 3000. At the back, there's the little business card information as well. Again, I mean, you don't just go for one country, you go for multiple countries. It can be done differently as well. So, I mean, I, I'd love to make a South African version as well soon enough. I wonder why. Um, as well as my Dutch heritage as well, so Dutch flag. I mean, the world is open. Basically, take a flag, put it on an antenna, but put some electronics in there. You have an awesome solution that does the following. First of all, performance and craftsmanship without compromise. So we don't really try to compromise on performance. We try to get the best that you can get for customer, but with some value add. In this case, it's a graphic example of a value add, but it proves the point that antennas can look cool. That was my key message when I did this project, and it's kind of a showpiece and a statement, and the message is antennas can be cool. They can look awesome, and they can help you doing that. And that drives into the YouTube channel as well. So YouTube channel is there for education. It's there for promoting our products. It's promoting our partners that we work with. And it's also to educate the general market in something that we love, that is getting people connected in remote places. There's no question about that. That is the passion that we have. However, always a however, I'm not here to just talk about black art technologies. We're here to talk about Wave Pro as well because they have the Booth 3000. As I mentioned before, Wave Pro is a company that now Garlock has decades and decades of experience in PTFE and, and polymer and, and materials. They now have a solution available for our antenna and RF engineering community. It is a customizable PTFE material. So basically anything from 2DK to 20DK and all sorts of um, variable values for you to look at. The losses can be as low as 0.0007. I hope I got that right. Um, loss tangent. Um, the material itself, there's variable styles and ways to mold and make things for customers. And I'll go through a few examples and I'll use an antenna example as as example, I'm uh, repeating myself here, for what can be done. PC beats, of course, first of all, that's easy from a standard perspective. That's just a slab of material. Um, the example that I have here with me that's also going to be on the booth is a planar LPDA. So it's basically a disc of an antenna. It was presented in quite, quite a nice format by the paper that I have there showing on the screen. Um, there is this little antenna that we have to show. So basically, this is the PTFE-based material. The guys at Wave Pro duplicated the um, the DK, which is 3.5. So this is a DK 3.5, and they got this um, 
uh, printed with uh, metal or metalized basically so now this is a functional antenna that replicates what was in that presented in that paper that's what the antenna looks like and that's the result that you'll get not going into detail about what the antenna can do at the moment this would be a bi-directional antenna so no matter which side of the antenna you use that side or that side there is radiation going that way that way a little going to the sides that's the fundamental way this antenna works um, makes me pretty much <laughs> very excited about what's going to happen soon. Um, some other examples, so my personal background and passion is very much around patch antennas. Now I just want to say the examples that we're going to give you is very low level, it's not rocket science, it's not something that you need to really have a PhD in antenna designed for to work through this, it's just to ex explain and to give you some thoughts and ideas for where can you actually rather than stick to certain values and certain dimensions for your dielectric material in the case of a PC board or otherwise how about let's open up the conversation let's open up the thinking and see well to get this performance that I really want I need to get a DK of X and that is what we this this solution comes into play now my passion in patch antennas may be a surprise to the YouTube audience but people who know me and uh, as an antenna designer know batch antennas in my crystal antennas is really one of my um, I've been doing that since my, um, my postgrad master's degree back in South Africa still 20, 20 years ago. Anyway, so that is a microstrip patch antenna. It's a reference antenna that we've used for certain designs. It's a 700 megahertz patch antenna, so of course that's um, one of the building blocks that we were playing with. Never got it into a product, but it, it gets you going on 700 megahertz, so basically the low band in 4G. It's it's standard PC board, so what you see on the screen is just a standard PC board. Nothing fancy has been done yet. It has a resonance that is in that band that, that we could have been interested in if we were to use this for 4G antenna. It has two ports as well, so ready for more and more solution. The next step would be to, um, well, of course, first show you the radiation pattern as well. So that's, that's awesome. And following that, what you would do is then add a substrate and add a superstrate. So with the substrate, as is expected, the radiation, um, the, the um, not the radiation, the um, uh, reflection would drop because the resonant frequency of the antenna will drop down. That's just the way it's going to be. With the superstrate, you can then also manipulate your radiation pattern a little bit to make that a little bit more towards what you actually want to have. So that's pretty awesome as well. Combining those two, choosing the values, getting the thickness exactly what you want it to be, that's the kind of antenna that you can get out of it. So the previous antenna, if you they took a close look at 4 dB gain. The new antenna is 7.6 dB gain. The resonant frequency is close to 400 megahertz. Uh, let's just see. Uh, no, not yet, not yet. It's uh, not that low yet, sorry. Um, but Seth said that, that frequency shift happened quite clearly. Um, and that's that's the kind of thing that you can do. And now just imagine if you have different DK values, how much will you manipulate it in different, different directions as well. Now, um, another example that you have is just a dielectric resonator antenna. In dielectric resonators, there's so many things you can talk about, but I chose one that I specifically want to see for myself. Dielectric resonator, uh, in this case, is just a loaded monopole. The loaded monopole antenna, in this case, is, man, surprise, surprise, loaded with dielectric material. Um, it's on a ground plane. You can see the ground, the um, impedance bandwidth of the antenna is significant. So now it's a wide band antenna with a reflection coefficient of minus 10 dB across significant bandwidth. In fact, it's almost the whole screen that I have there, which is from 0.1 to point, uh, what is that? 0.1 to 0.3 out of a single element that is a significant bandwidth. Um, the radiation pattern is what you get. 4.47 uh, at the peak values and then that's the field distribution. Give you a nice picture, give you a nice appreciation for where this thing is heading. Uh, another example, radomes, probably don't want to spend too much time on that because there's many ways to get radomes done, but the nice thing here is you actually can put it as part of your whole design ecosystem, so now you have an, a radome that can have different values specifically to what you want to do. gives you the opportunity to rather than say, well, I need to use this material and that's going to influence my antenna in a certain way. There's actually that little bit of extra opportunity for you to take the um, freedom to say, you know what, my radome actually needs to be a DK of a higher value or a lower value, what can we do? Field distribution, because it's such a thin antenna, a thin artifact in the antenna should be um, minimal. 
Um, now, going into millimeter wave, because that's obviously an interesting um, topic as well. A dielectric rod is an example we have here. So, dielectric rod, rod antenna. The bandwidth that we present here is from 60 gig to 100 gig, so a significant bandwidth and the antenna radiation pattern, as is no surprise, just a decent antenna is from 17.8 dBi in this example, um, showing that at 80 gig, and there's the field distribution that you will get. Now, this is not a surprise, this is just a standard antenna that you can use, but imagine if you now have the variability of a DK. You don't just say, I choose material X and that's what we're going to get. You can tweak it a little bit and the losses will be quite manageable as well. Um, going into more beam shaping type of antennas, and this is, there's two examples following on this one, um, a dielectric lens. Um, of course, the shape is the thing that is really determining what you want to do but uh, not just the shape in this case, but getting a variable DK value for a specific lens can make the shape more suitable for your application. So, for instance, yes, you say, I can't have a shape that is too, too thick or too this or too that. That's where the DK variability can give you some opportunities. And WaveLock or GarPro um, basically has um, a lot of manufacturing facilities and so they can help you with the shaping of the lens as well so you can integrate it properly into your final design. Then the last one, which I think is to me really the kicker, is something like the Lunenburg lens. Now, Lunenburg lens, for um, those of you who don't know, it's just a, a dielectric composition of different um, DK densities from the center core through outer layers to the outer core that, if you look at it mathematically, would have the same effect and the same way of working as a shaped dielectric lens. But in this case, you can have a flat sheet, but Garlock and the um, well, Garlock as the main company, and then the guys from WavePro as such will help you to um, build this whole solution up so they can do all the um, manufacturing for you from the center core, then layering up the next core and the next core to get you a, a nice Lunenburg lens that has typical performance that's shown here, like I mean, 17.9 in this example, and the um, radiation pattern or basically the fuel distribution through the lens at the end is exactly like you want it and you have the freedom from the center core to the outer core and manufacturing can be done in conjunction with Carlock and WavePro to give you the solution you want with a low loss application or low loss material. Um, right, in summary, I'm just going to jump through this quickly. So what we've covered, dielectric substrate is a fundamental building block in certain antenna design types. If it's part of what you want to do, this is an antenna, uh, a feature or a company that you definitely want to look at. Bandwidth improvement, specifically thinking about what I had with the um, dielectric monopole or the um, dielectric loaded monopole. Um, also, of course, with frequency shift and stuff, that's with the patch antenna. You can see those are the kind of things you can manipulate and layering different thick, uh, material properties and types will give you different um, levels of freedom you can play with size reduction because of the um, antenna reduction and the frequency reduction it, it turns out to have a size reduction as well environmental protection that's the right home as such beam shaping the lenses there's a typical lens there's a Lunenburg lens that's the kind of um and also the super straight of the patch antenna um and, and it's, it's a design variable you can use now the physical support um, I was thinking about the um, actual substrate there, but if you want to have a very low DK but make your system strong and robust but don't want to have too high of a DK, then the material can be managed and you can control that with the um, conjunction with the um, design manufacturers. Um, now, Black Art Technologies can, of course, support design and integration of antennas and RF circuits using dielectric materials to help you through the um, design process. We use CST as our design tool. Um, WavePro can offer custom PTFE material with low loss characteristics to meet your design requirements for whatever project you may want to go for. Thanks for watching. If you are at IMS 2022, please come and visit us at booth 3000. If you're an Australian customer and you are in Australia, when I'm back next week, Thursday, so June the 30th, or even before that, just send me an email. If you have any questions, let us know and we'll definitely be in contact. I can get you in touch with the, um, the guys at WavePro and if we can help you with any design work, feel free to, to reach out to us. We are happy to come and have a chat with you about how any design requirements can be integrated into a design. Thank you. Um, hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.